Do you feel ignorant because you don't know numbers? You don't know which one go which way and they got all these marks and things on them? I know, honey, it's hard. But there is a solution. Fort Bend tutoring. And now here go Mr. Whit. Explain math to us, Mr. Whit. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Whit, Larry Whittington with Fort Bend Tutoring, FBT. And today we'll be discussing the product rule. All right, let's get down on some calculus, shall we? All right, so here for the product rule, anytime you have your original function where it has y equals to or h of x equals to a function times another function, meaning a factor with your variable times another factor with your variable, you can use the product rule. So in order to differentiate that, in order to find the derivative, you're going to multiply the derivative of that first function times the second function plus the first function times the derivative of the second function. In other words, f prime g plus f g prime, okay? So this right here, that's the product rule, ladies and gentlemen, and that's what we'll be using when we're working out these problems today. So let's get started on our first problem, right? Okay, so here I have my first problem. I have f of x equals to 4x squared times x minus 6. So what I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen, as far as having two different functions multiplying on one another or two different factors with the variable x, is notice that your first factor, and this is already a factored form, right? Your first factor, 4x squared, is what we'll call f. Okay, and this second factor, this x minus 6, I'll call that g, and then apply the product rule here from there, that f prime g plus f g prime. And always, ladies and gentlemen, anytime you're dealing with a formula in any level of mathematics, it's a good idea to write that formula down every time you use it. It just gets you more familiarized with the equation and the formula, as well as the process in order to solve it. So, let's get things started shall we? So my first derivative of this function is going to be found out using the product rule by finding the first derivative of f. So f prime using the power rule is going to be 8x. All right, that's it. So 2 times 4 is 8, bring on the variable. Then I'll be multiplying g unchanged right next to it. All right, so not unchained like Django unchained. No, I said unchanged. There it is. Okay. Then I'll be adding to that f, which is going to be 4x squared, times the derivative of g, which is just going to be 1. All right. From there, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to distribute and combine any like terms you may have. So I'm going to get my arrows pop in here, and I'll have 8x times x is going to be 8x squared. Then 8x times negative 6 is negative 48x. And then I'll be bringing down this positive 4x squared. From there, I can combine my like terms and write my answer in descending order of x. So 8x squared plus 4x squared is going to give me 12x squared minus 48x, and this is my answer. That's it. Okay, so that was the product rule, ladies and gentlemen. We started out identifying our f function and our g function. Our f is 4x squared, our g is x minus 6. Then using that product rule, we took the derivative of f, which is 8x, times g, plus f, which is 4x squared, times the derivative of g, which is 1. And then we distributed and combined our like terms and wrote our answer in descending order of x. Done. That's it. That's it. OK? So here, let's move on to problem number two, shall we? All right, so above we have that y prime, that derivative using the product rule is going to be f prime g plus f g prime. And this is what we have for problem number two. We have 3x squared times the quantity of 4x cubed plus 5. So first of all, I'm going to identify 3x squared as my first factor, and then g as the second factor, OK? And then I'll be utilizing the product rule in order to solve it. So let me change my pen color. So f prime of x is going to equal to the following. I'm going to take the derivative of 3x squared, which is 6x, times my g, which is 4x cubed plus 5, plus f, which is 3x squared, times g prime, which is going to be 12x squared. OK. So that's all I would had to do in order to derive it. Next is going to be the algebra, simplifying it. OK. The hardest part of calculus to a lot of people, ladies and gentlemen, is the algebra. All right. Notice that the calculus aspect of this problem is already done. We've already found the derivative. We just need to simplify it and write it in descending order of our variable. So I'll be distributing, get my arrows popping here, 6x times 4x cubed to give me 24x to the fourth power. I then have 6x times 5, which is 30x, 
plus 3x squared times 12x squared is going to give me a positive 36x to the fourth power. And then I'll be combining my like terms and writing it in descending order of x. So 24x to the fourth power plus 36x to the fourth power is going to give me 60x to the fourth power plus 30x. And that's the answer. That's it. That's it. 60x to the fourth power plus 30x and done, ladies and gentlemen. That's the answer right there. Okay? So let's move on to the next problem. Let's check it out. See what we have. In our next problem here, problem number three, I have y equals to the quantity of x squared plus five times three x minus two. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to first of all start out by labeling. All right, I'm going to start out by saying that the first factor is f, second factor is g. Uh huh. And in continuing on with this process, I need to change my color, and I'll have y prime. Okay, the first derivative of our function is going to be f prime, which is 2x, times g, which is 3x minus 2, plus x squared plus 5, times the derivative of g, which is 3. Okay. From there, I'm going to distribute. I'm going to get my arrows popping here. All right. Get to distribute. Love the distributive property. All right. Love to get my arrows popping. So I have 2x times 3x. That gives me 6x squared. 2x times negative 2 is negative 4x. 3 times x squared is a positive 3x squared. And then 3 times 5 is going to be 15. All right. From there, I'm going to combine my like terms and write my answer in descending order of my variable. So I'll have y prime equivalent to the following. It'll be equivalent to 9x squared minus 4x plus 15. And that's it. That's the answer. Put a box around that for you. There it is. Okay, So we started out with y equals to the quantity of x squared plus 5 times 3x minus 2. I labeled the first function, that first factor, as f. And then I labeled the second factor as g. You'll be able to label the first factor as f and the second factor as g as long as it has your variable involved in the factor. Okay, If it's just a coefficient, if it's just a number, then you won't be able to do that. I mean, you could technically, but it would be a total waste of time. It would not be the best way to find the derivative by doing that. So as long as it has the variable x in it, hey, there you go. Use a product rule if you have two factors. Done and done. From there, we applied the product rule. I said f prime g plus f g prime. Finding the first derivative of f, then multiplying it times g, plus f times the derivative of g. From there, we distribute it, combine our like terms, got the answer in the red box. Let's move on to the next problem. All right. In our next problem, in our final problem for today's lesson here, for the product rule, you'll have y equals to 2x times 4x plus 3 squared. Okay, So I'm going to start out by labeling this, this 2x, as f and the 4x plus 3 squared as my g factor. All right. So then applying the product rule, I'll have to do the following. Mm -hmm. I'll say that y prime is equivalent to f prime, which is just 2, times that g, which is 4x plus 3 squared, plus 2x, which is f, times g prime. Now, in order to find the derivative of g, you'll have to utilize the chain rule. All right, so check our video out on the chain rule. Okay, it's pretty good. So I'll be bringing down this exponent 2 times this 4x plus 3. You'll subtract 1 from your exponent to leave you with 4x plus 3 to the first power times the derivative of the inside, which is 4. Okay, that last step a lot of people forget. So don't forget to take the derivative of the inside when you're using the chain rule. From there, everything has been derived so now it's up to your algebra to simplify your problem notice that we have at least one 4x plus 3 in each of our terms here so I'm gonna bring down y squared and factor out 4x plus 3 that'll leave me with 2 times 4x plus 3 plus 2x times 2 times 4 is gonna give me 16x like so. Then simplifying this further, I have y prime equals to 4x plus 3. Inside of the brackets, I'm going to distribute, got my arrows popping. This is going to be 8x plus 6 plus 16x. All right. Bringing down that y prime there and my GCF of 
4x plus 3, that greatest common factor, inside of the brackets, I'll be able to combine my like terms. So 8x plus 16x is going to give me 24x plus 6. All right, But we're not done yet. Mm -mm. See, inside of the second set of parentheses, that 24x plus 6, I can factor out 6. And that's exactly what I'll do. So here I have y prime equals to 6 times 4x plus 3 times 4x plus 1. And this is going to be my final result, ladies and gentlemen. Done and done. That's it. Okay? That's going to be the simplification of the derivative. You got it. So we started out with problem number four with y equals to 2x times 4x plus 3 raised to the second power. And from there, we applied the product rule, noticing that f is going to be 2x as well as g is going to be 4x plus 3 squared. And we would have to use the chain rule when finding the derivative of that g function right there. So that's going to do it for us today for the product rule. As always, this is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. And if you're able, please donate. That helps us bring you free videos. All right? Peace. We certainly hope you enjoyed today's presentation by Fort Bend Tutoring. Did you understand the program? Would you like to rate us or give us some feedback or subscribe to us? You could do all that on Tutor Me Math dot net